welcome to today's tutorial so in this tutorial we're going to discuss how we can find uh, composite functions and then apart from that we'll also discuss um, how you sketch the, the graphs of composite functions and how you sketch the graphs of any given function and then the other thing we we'll look at is finding the values of x for which a given function is equated is equated to another function all right so this is how the question is so we're going to have we have the first question here um which is y is equal to g of x minus 3 and if you have not yet subscribed to the channel make sure that you do so by clicking the subscription button and the notification button there should also um if if maybe you have questions should also feel free to contact me on any of these lines on the screen okay so let's see how we can solve the questions okay so we have this g of x minus 3 so g of x minus 3 is simply just uh, replacing what is x in g we put x minus 3 so what is x in g we're going to put x minus 3 so this is going to be 3 x minus 3 squared so when you simplify this expression you have your y is equal to um, your y will therefore be equal to okay I was trying to read through the question so the y, y is also going to be equal to 3 when you simplify this you're going to get x squared minus uh, 6x then plus 9 when you simplify it further, you get 3x squared minus 3 times 6, 18x, and then 3 times 9, you're getting 27. Okay, so now sketching the graphs of a quadratic equation is very simple. So there are just about four important things that you need for you to sketch the graph of a quadratic equation you need the turning point the first thing you need is the turning point you also need the x intercept you also need the y intercept and then you also need to know whether it's going to face up or i mean it's going to face up or down so how do we tell whether it's facing up or down you check the value of a which is the coefficient of x squared so if a is greater than zero it's going to have i mean if a is um less than zero it's going to have a maximum value meaning it's going to face down and then when a is greater than zero it's going to have a minimum value meaning it's going to uh, face up and then to find the x intercepts you, you you simply just replace or rather to find the x intercept you, you just um replace the value of y here with a zero and then to find the y intercept you replace the value of x in the expression with a zero so the y intercept is already found you can, when you replace zero where there's x there you just remain with 27 so the y intercept is simply just y is equal to 27 then to find the x intercepts we replace the value of y with a zero so when we put zero this side we solve the quadratic equation we are going to have something like this when you simplify this by dividing by three you get x squared minus six x um x squared minus six x uh plus nine is equal to zero when you simplify this or when you solve this quadratic equation you get back to this this is what you're going to get back to 
So when you when you solve this quadratic equation, you're going to have x minus three squared. Yeah. So what this means is that um, the values of x or yeah, you can try to solve it. You find the you find the the factors or first you find the product. The product is found by multiplying the coefficient of x squared and nine. So the product is simply just nine. Then the sum is going to be the coefficient of x, which is negative six. And then what else? The factors. The factors will just be uh, three. I mean negative three and negative three. So you are going to have x squared minus three minus three x plus 9 so if you want to know how to solve the quadratic equation you can text me on whatsapp i'll send you a video where i i, I showed i mean i solved quadratic equation using different formulas so we're using factorization formula so factorize then we're going to have x minus 3 there then here my negative x negative three is common we still have x minus three and then is equal to zero so we we'll have x minus three another x minus three which is just the same as x so we equate each of these terms to zero so you see what i told you x minus three x minus three just the same as x minus three squared so you equate these expressions to zero so when you equate x minus 3 to 0 and another x minus 3 to 0, you are going to have the value of x. When you take this 3 to the other side of the equal sign, you are going to have the value of x is equal to 3, another value of x to be equal to 3. So what this means is that the given quadratic equation has equal roots. And then when a quadratic equation has equal roots, it means that it, ta it, it doesn't cut the x-axis, it will just touch the x-axis. So if you have two different roots here as your solutions, it means that the quadratic equation, I mean, the, the, the given uh, quadratic, um, I mean, the, your sketch is going to be like this if they are different. So you have the first one, which is alpha, the second one, which is beta there. And then if you have the same, if you have equal roots like in this case, means that on your x or y plane like this, your k will just touch the point there. So in this case, it's going to touch 3. Then if you have imaginary roots, it means that it doesn't cut the x-axis at any point. So meaning it will be something like this, to either be this side or that side or that side or there okay so i was just trying to show you the different types of graphs that we have so let us now quickly sketch because we know um we know to say it cuts i mean it th th this quadratic equation does not cut the x-axis it only touches the x-axis at x is equal to three so in this case we can even make an assumption not really an assumption but that's the way it is it's going to turn at x is equal to three meaning automatically the value of y becomes zero at the turning point or if you want you can try to replace this at three in this expression where is it this expression try to put three in this expression you discover that the answer that you are going to get as the value of y will be zero so meaning the turning point is just going to be equal to uh, 3 comma 0 so sketching this graph and since we know to say the value of a is greater than 0 so 3 is greater than 0 it's a positive number it's greater than 0 meaning meaning the given equation is going to have a minimum value so it's going to have a minimum value and it's turning at 3 comma 0 so this is my three if i want i can even put demarcations one two three so this is my three comma zero this is my turning point and then the y intercept this is the point at which the curve cuts the y axis so i'm going to put it okay let me first sketch so i'm going to have a curve which is going to be like this it will turn at this point then go back 
So this point where it's cutting the y axis, this is my uh, y intercept. So this is where my 27 is. And the other thing is, I think we've sketched. There's nothing. There, there's nothing that we need to add. We've been told to sketch and not to draw. Okay. So this is how you sketch. This is how you deal with uh, this first curve. Let us now see how we can deal with this one. G of f inverse of x. So what this means is that we first have to find f inverse of x before we we replace it in g. Okay. So the next um the next uh question is y is equal to g of f inverse of x. So the first thing we have to do is to find f inverse of x. So f of x is equal to 2x. So I'm going to say let y be equal to 2x. So I've just equated 2x to y. So in this case I'm going to make x the subject of the formula. So I'm going to divide everything by 2. So x is there for y over 2. Meaning f inverse of x is simply just equal to x over 2. Just replace y is y, you put x. So this is my f inverse of x. So now to find g of f inverse of x I'm going to have what is x in g I'm going to put or I'm going to replace with uh, x over 2 so we have 3 then what is x I'm going to put x over 2 and then we are saying squared so we have 3 x squared over 4 which is just equal to 3 over 4x squared. So sketching this graph is simply, is also very much simple. And how do we do that? So this is also a quadratic equation. So we first have to find the x-intercept, the y-intercept, and also the, yeah, and also the turning point. So we know to say, okay, so this is our function. So our g f inverse of x is equal to 3 over 4x squared. So now to sketch to sketch this curve, um, we first have to find the x intercept, the y intercept, the turning point and also yeah I said the x-intercept, y-intercept, and the turning point. So now to find the turning point, we know to say at the turning point, the value of x is given by negative b over 2a. So the same formula that I'm using, you can also apply it on the first one. You still get the same answer which I got. So negative b, in this case, since this is a quadratic equation, you can also write it as 0 uh, x there, and then plus the constant there is also zero so our b is simply just zero so we have negative zero which is simply just zero over two then the value of a is three over four so the turning point is simply just equal to zero over any number we we'll still get a zero so now to get the y value of this turning point the x value of the turning point is zero we replace the x value into the main equation. So when we put 0 where there is x and there, we still get the 0 as the answer. Meaning the turning point in this case is simply just 0, 0. Then after finding the turning point, we have to find the x-intercept, the y-intercept. And um, yeah, we've, we've managed to find the turning point. So the x-intercept is simply just going to be... Uh, we know to say in the x-axis the value of uh, y is equal to 0. So meaning on this part here, we're going to replace with 0 to find the x-intercept. So we're going to replace this part with 0 and then we equate them to that. So x is also going to be 0 at the turning point. 
and then the value of y at or, what, or, or the x intercept rather simply just x is equal to zero and then the y intercept you just get the constant in this case which is also zero so the y intercept is also just y is equal to zero so sketching this graph we also have to check the coefficient of x squared this uh, tells us whether it's going to face up or down so when the value of a is greater than zero it means that it's going to face um, it's, it's, if, if it's greater than zero it means that it's going to have a minimum value and when it's less than zero it means that it's going to have the maximum value yeah so in this case the value of a is uh, the value of a is greater than zero meaning it's going to have a minimum minimum value so we expect it to come out like this so sketching the graph of this will simply just be this so the turning point is 0 comma 0 and then the x and the y intercept will still be 0 comma 0 so we expect our graph to come out like that so this is our graph all right let's take a look at how we can solve the last question which is say find the values of x for which f inverse of x, which is just with, uh, which is just this part, is equal to g of x. So g of x is 3x squared. So f inverse of x is simply just x over 2, this one. They're saying we equate it to uh, g of x, which is 3x squared. So to find the values of x, we take uh, x over 2. Or if, uh, if you want to can cross multiply first, when you cross multiply, you have x is equal to 6x squared. And then you take this x to the other side of the equal sign, meaning you are going to have 6x squared minus x is equal to 0. Then you factorize. When you factorize, the common um, element in these two terms is x. Then we are going to have 6x in brackets minus 1 is equal to 0. So the first value of x will be found by equating x to 0. The second value of x will be found by equating this part to 0. So I'm going to have, let me write it here. Yeah, so let me demarcate. So the first value of x is simply just x is equal to 0. The second value of x will be x 6x minus 1 is equal to 0. So when you take negative 1 to the other side of the equal sign and then divide by 6 on both sides you get the value of x to be equal to 1 over 6 1 over 6 as the answer so these are the two values of x which they are looking for on this part so thank you very much for watching today's tutorial so if you have not yet subscribed to the channel make sure that you do so by clicking the subscription button and if you have any questions feel free to contact me on any of the lines that i sh showed you on the screen and don't forget to click on the notification button um, so that you don't miss out the videos i'll be posting my name is hamted see you in the next tutorial video shalom shalom